What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a live trade to share with you on the SPY. I took some puts off a break and retest of low of day and I wanna go ahead and share that trade with you guys today. I know a lot of people have been gaining interest on trading the SPY, on trading futures lately and this type of trade is something that I will look for consistently on both the S&P 500 futures and also on the SPY ETF. So I figured I would share this trade today. Of course, it's the break and retest once again. That's my bread and butter strategy but I wanted to share with you how I look for it on the SPY and the S&P 500 futures. After we go over the short-term trade that I took today, I want to go ahead and do some analysis on the SPY coming into tomorrow. We have some very heavy economic news both Wednesday and Thursday this week, which could definitely change the direction on this market. So I figured I would throw in some analysis at the end of the video. All right, guys. So on your screen, you are looking at the one-minute chart on the S&P 500 futures. On the left, you can see this is yesterday. This is after hours, pre-market, and today's intraday. Now, for me personally, I enjoy watching the S&P 500 futures over the SPY ETF. In my opinion, watching the S&P 500 futures is a little bit more fluid. There's no gaps on the chart as it does trade overnight. So it gives me a little bit of a better picture of what levels to watch in my opinion. I know some of you guys watch the SPY, but in my opinion, I would favor watching the S&P 500 futures. Now that doesn't mean that I can't trade the SPY ETF with the S&P 500 futures chart because they do move the same. They're the same exact thing. One's an ETF. One is the futures contract. The numbers are different, but they're the exact same chart. So today, Today, I was using the S&P 500 futures and I started to spot a low of day break and retest. Every day that I come into the market, I am always aware of where the previous day low is and where the previous day high is, right? So in this situation, we have a previous day low that's right around this general area, right around this 39.60. And we have a pre-market high that's right around this 39.90. The previous day high is much higher, all the way up here around 4,017. This level clearly never came into play today. So today, we opened up the market and we basically just traded between the low of day yesterday and the pre-market high. We had an inside day, no clear direction, no clear price action, just sort of a push to the upside, barely got back to the pre-market highs, and then we started to see that price action come into the downside. So I was not very interested to the upside here. You could try to trade to the upside off the previous day low, which could have been a little opportunity to the upside here on the S&P 500 futures or on a SPY call. That could have been something you looked for. But in this, in my opinion, if we're not trading above the pre-market high, I am not as interested in upside. I like to see that break of the pre-market high or the break of the low to start to get interested in a trade. As you guys hear me on the voice chat a lot or on the live streams, being careful trading in the middle here, being careful trading in the middle of a channel on an inside day where there's not really much price action, sometimes I like to just stay away. But when I start to see a price action set up below the previous day lows and potentially below the intraday lows, that is where I like to try to catch some momentum and try to catch some price action. So you guys can see today about intraday, we started to get a very quick flush to the downside. Now, I'm not 100% sure what caused this flush. It seemed like there was some news that came out on Apple intraday that there was some COVID restrictions that were easing in China, which caused Apple to temporarily push to the upside. But very quickly, it sort of dumped right back to the downside. And I believe that the Apple move intraday is what did trigger this downside move on the ES. You guys know how big Apple is for the market. It. And I think this Apple move did trigger the downside here on the ES. And this is the move that I took advantage of today on a break and retest to the downside. So you guys can see right now, even as the market trades live, if we put a zone here at the previous day low, you can see the ES has rejected the previous day low multiple times today. As we look at this market live, you can see we found supported it in the morning. We found a rejection here intraday. We did quickly pop above it, but quickly failed. And as I speak right now, the market is currently trading. You can see we are actually rejecting that 3960 again. So this previous day low was very influential today and is definitely something you want to be watching as you trade. So if I zoom in on this chart here and I look at the one minute chart and we actually can adjust this line just a little bit to sort of tailor to our intraday trading, you can see that there was a previous low right here around this 3961 intraday today. We had a previous low right around this 3961 and we had the previous day low right around this 3960. So right here in this general area, I am interested to see, does the market break that low? Does it retest it? Does it reject it? And if it does, can I find myself a trade for a break and retest to the downside? So what you guys can see right here, we had a previous low that we fell below right here around 10, 1105. If I go ahead and zoom in a little closer, we can see we broke below that low intraday. This was our intraday low. We broke below it. We also broke below the previous day low. We came back up. We created a little bit of a bear flag here, and we started to reject this move. 
Now, when you watch the live trade, you will see that on this candle right here, this is the 1107 candle. This is the candle that got me interested. Now, the reason I'm interested on this candle in particular is because you can see we pushed higher. And when you watch the live trade, you will see how it rejects. You will see this candle start to reject. You will see that wick start to form to the downside. Knowing that when we pushed back into it, we found that previous support and we started to reject it on this one minute candle. I entered my spy puts here looking for a break and retest of the previous lows, got a very quick bear flag in my favor and made about $2,000 in a little bit under one minute, I believe. I think it's about one to two minutes, a very quick move to the downside, break and retest of the previous lows, a very nice bear flag breakdown on that retest. So I want to share this trade live today and sort of stress the importance of previous day lows, previous day highs. This is something I've talked about in the past. You can see how well the market has rejected that previous day low here, even on the intraday. Here's your previous low. Here's your intraday low. It was a very nice retest rejection early morning today, and it even has rejected. And if we zoom into the price action as we trade now, you guys can see we're starting to reject it here once again. So let's see how this works out into end of day. There's about 40 minutes left in trading. So we'll see how this market ends up end of day. So I hope that quick analysis of my sort of mindset and trade idea helped you guys understand what I was looking for. Now I want to go ahead and run that live recording for you. After we go over that live trade, we'll do some overall analysis on the S&P 500 as we head into tomorrow and Thursday with some major economic news. All right, hold on. What we got here is an ES break and retest of the lows here. I may look to go short the ES here. Yeah, I'm short ES. Stop is over 36, 39.62. Very nice break and retest of the previous lows. I like that a lot. There we go, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> All right. I am taking that very, oh, oh, okay. I'll let it go a little bit. All right, I'm out. That's a big win. That's two grand right there. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that live recording of my trade today. Now I want to quickly jump into a little bit of what to watch for tomorrow, some key levels to watch as we approach some major economic news towards the end of the week. The big thing to be watching here on the ES is the 3912, 3920, this little 10 point range. This is the support that you have to watch tomorrow. We found support here on Thursday of last week. We found support here over uh, Friday into Monday back on the first and uh the back on the 30th and the first of november and you can see that this level has sort of held this market higher we also have the 100 sma at this level as well so in my opinion if we come into tomorrow and we break this low off of economic data i think this sets you up for a bigger move to the downside i think this 39 10 39 20 level is crucial if the market can come down come down to this level if, if you know if the economic data can push us higher this would be the level to be watching out for 39 10 39 20 previous rejection into support this is the level that has to hold up tomorrow this is what i would be watching intraday tomorrow as we get the news as we get a move on the market if we start to flush this level i think you get that downside this is a big cpi move here back on thursday and we can definitely give some of that back if we crack this level here around 39 20 39 10. now to the upside if we get a reaction to the upside on this market here's what we have to watch out for on the upside, we have this 39 or this 4,050 level and the 200 SMA. As you guys know, the 200 SMA has been a very influential level on this market. If I zoom out on the four hour chart, you can see back in August, we rejected that 200 SMA and that longer term downtrend. And you can see as of today, we have started to reject that 200 SMA and we definitely have to watch that if we get upside push. So if we do get an upside move, watch that 4,050 and that 200 SMA and even further than that, that if we get a 200 SMA break, you have to be watching the long-term downtrend that has been in place since the beginning of this year. So if I zoom out, you can see that we had a downtrend since the beginning of this year that we tested here, we tested here, and we have not yet tested yet. So if we do get an upside move on the economic data tomorrow and Thursday, watch for the 200 SMA 
and watch for this long-term downtrend. Those are the levels to watch to the upside. And if we do lose it to the downside, it is this 39.20, 39.10 level, the 100 SMA as well. So as of right now, the ES is trading between the 200 and the 100 SMA. It's getting tight in this range. Tomorrow and Thursday, we should see some reaction to economic data. And hopefully we see which direction this market moves next. Watch out for these levels. This will definitely be a good trading opportunity once we get out of this channel. All right, guys. So I just want to quickly share that video today. The live trade on my spy break and retest of low of day. I hope you understand what I did there. I hope you have an idea of what I was looking for. If you have any questions on that trade, make sure to drop them down below. Make sure to be careful tomorrow. We have a lot of economic data, both tomorrow and Thursday. If you guys want to stay updated with all of this, make sure to come join the pre-market live streams every single morning, preparing you for the upcoming trading days, preparing you with economic economic data, earnings, technical levels. It is all live starting at 8 a.m. Of course, completely free here on YouTube. Thank you guys again for watching today's video. If you liked it, press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.